Hello, this is Vinny Civarelli to discuss my LMS, Learning Management System. And I decided to do this learning management system with a gamified setup in which students are going to be asked to uh, be graded on a completion-based and proficiency-based scale. And the time and ability in which they show in completing the tasks will determine their point totals for various tasks and objectives. The theme that I've chosen was inspired by the Cuban strip, comic strip art of Spy vs. Spy, which was eventually used with Mad TV. So that'll be the premise of our class, as if we we're a spy agency or an intelligence agency. And before we get any further, just to remind you, this is a Spanish 1 typical high school class. And it's in the advent or the preparation of one-to-one -one devices where a majority of the coursework will be taken care of in the LMS. We'll start off in the Oficina Central, or the headquarters. This is where students and other stakeholders, parents, administrators that are interested in how the class works can come and get information. These are the two teams, a light team and a dark team, which will essentially be the class cut in half. And then within those larger groups, there'll be smaller groups of four or three depending on the class size and essentially these teams are competing against each other throughout the course of a class for the ability to do different things in the class maybe preferential seating perhaps they get an incentive during a lunch period with the teacher it really opens up a variety of options depending on the teacher's comfortability and the teacher's means in the antiguidad or tenure section it explains to everyone what the different levels are and how many experience points need to be acquired to earn the titles and then below I have a mock-up of a typical scoreboard where you see the students names the team that they're on either the dark or the light team and then their smaller uh, departmental teams and the level that they've earned the experience points they've earned and the AP they've earned which AP will make sense in a couple moments Back to the headquarters, then back to the home page. We go to the community folder, and this is essentially where students will communicate and interact with one another, whether it is a open-ended question or whether it is in response to a summative assessment where the students have to create something. They will be expected to share that with their classmates and, and in turn give feedback, constructive and positive feedback. And this is the space in which we'll do it. So there's an etiquette kind of guideline that I'd like to have with my students so there is an appropriate amount of decorum that goes on in class. The discussion board will be broken down into not only just open-ended questions as I mentioned but different pr productions of the units. For instance these will be the three major lessons from the unit that I'm going to share in this uh, screencast. And one was a Vokey presentation where they had to have a simulated conversation with each other and a partner. Um, the mission number two was a voice thread with a visual slideshow. And then part three of this mission or unit was to narrate a collage that they've created or simulate an interview in the background using green screen technology that we'll use in class. Personal reflection is a space where students will do a participation rubric and a grade sheet analysis rubric. This will be done four times a marking period with the teacher giving feedback and adjusting the grade and having conversations with students based off their abilities. Of course, there's a resource folder with different dictionaries and useful websites that a Spanish learner would want to take advantage of. And a library, finally, with, at this moment, just the proficiency guidelines that we've discussed in class up to this point. Back to the home page, the fun part now with the experience and AP points of a course like this is the workshop, the taller. And this gives students a way to use the different points they're earning in class for doing things inside and outside of the class, but for the course, for the content area. There's an achievement list that explains how many points are earned by completing various units. As the course goes along, different things will be added based off of challenges laid out by the teacher and students competing with one another to achieve those goals. And so that will be other ways to, to gain XP or AP. There's a demerit list, you know, in order to hold students accountable. But also this could be a great way to track 
undesirable behaviors and perhaps open a discussion for how to curve those behaviors. The item shop are different benefits that an individual or a team will get to have if they earn a certain amount of points or use a certain amount of AP points. Students can modify their names on the leaderboards with very creative ways, coloring them in or using different emojis. Groups can affect other groups. For instance, they can steal a thousand points from a rival team if they give 1,000 of their own AP. And then there are some just kind of practical real world type items you know, give the students an opportunity to listen to some music if they reach a certain checkpoint for me. And then, of course, we can't forget the end of semester party, which all students need to acquire at least 15,000 AP to get there. The gift shop allows the students to take advantage of our great updates section where they can send out a message either to another classmate, either to me, the teacher, or they can just make a general proclamation of their group, uh, essentially talking trash to the other groups. Obviously, I would be the go-between for that and make sure that it's all in good humor, and they can purchase these various emojis that are of a Spanish theme to spice up their messages that they'll be able to put on the message board. Just trying to give the students a, a sense of ownership that this class is as much of theirs as it is of mine. Now we can get into the meat and potatoes, so to speak, the introducción básica, or the basic training. And this is where students will complete the first unit of the class, the pre-unit of the class. So they will complete a scavenger hunt and read the syllabus. They will take a look at the curriculum topics. They will create a guideline poster that we will crowdsource as a class and discuss what are desirable behaviors and what are some ways to prevent them. We'll do an icebreaker where students create a flag of their country and essentially this will be the flag of their group and so they have a uh, way of identifying themselves other than with the title of the group. A student survey to get some feedback and probably open up for a little bit of group discussion in class to get to know everybody. Language contract to discuss the commitment to speak in the target language 90% or more of the time. Then there's a technological, technological tutorial where students will set themselves up on the learning management system and various other websites that I use in class such as Quizlet, Duolingo, This Is Language. It really just depends on which websites we're going to use throughout the course. I'm going to set up sample lessons for students to accomplish and use the basic functions of those websites so they get a preview before we actually start an assignment with those things in class. And after basic training is over, they will be able to go on to the various missions. Mission one, or unit one, as we're going to call it, is the meritorio, or the internship. The lesson that I'm going to focus on in, in, in my presentation here is the espionaje, or the intelligence gathering. Uh, students will learn how to talk to locals while gathering information on people in the community. And here is the layout of the mission, or the unit. There's a mission description that'll explain to them essentially what the learning map and goals of the unit are. At the end are the can-do statements that a student should be able to prove they can do um, throughout the course. Students will, will have the different can-do statements added throughout the units, but as soon as they feel like they're able to answer or do that can-do or that objective, they can prove it either orally or through um, a, a writing method. In the future, I would like to make it to where the students are asked to probably do one or the other, or at least half writing and half in uh, some kind of audio or visual means. Lesson plan one, ask the students to learn about the important terms of the mission, practice the verb conjugation SER, do a discussion board assignment where they are going to create, well, first decipher different tweets from people talking about themselves and then create their own. And then they're going to finish up this lesson plan with wordplay by creating a acrostic poem describing who they are and who they're not. And then they're going to simulate having a conversation with one of their classmates and they're going to record it using a Vokey. So they're going to create a digital avatar and introduce themselves individually in this video. And then they're going to have a simulated conversation. And as I mentioned earlier, that final product will go on the discussion board and students will be required or given at least a week to look at each other's videos and give some feedback to one another. 
this local knowledge is a great way for me to integrate some of the authentic resources I've been made privy to. So essentially, students will watch a authentic 30 second to 45 second video and they'll have to do um, where they'll have the opportunity to decipher that and practice their listening skills. They'll have as many chances as they want to do it to score a grade that they're happy with. It, it, it goes from practicing the vocabulary to listening skills and picking out the words that are missing and then even some comprehension sections to see if the students understood what happened in the video. And we'll do two of those in a unit. But they're going to sandwich the different units to kind of break up the the specificity of the units and, and perhaps these can be used as homework assignments as well depending on the type of class that we're working with. Unit 2 now asks students to complete a psychological self-evaluation. Essentially there's a survey from a magazine in Spanish. They're going to evaluate how they fall on the spectrum according to that magazine's questions and decide if they would agree with it or not. And then we do a little bit of an interview with the class and then they're going to create a chart and kind of decipher what that chart means. They're going to look at some great authentic interviews from musicians at a recent music festival in a Spanish-speaking country and this will be a great way for students to glean and get information about how those people describe themselves. And then last but not least the students are going to create a experience where they're the security guard and they must describe the people that are around certain celebrities by describing them physically and personality wise. And so they'll create a slideshow and use that slideshow in the background of a uh, um, a voice thread and in that voice thread they will describe what they're seeing. Another second local knowledge, I won't go into that again and we'll get right to Unit 3 and Unit 3 is the finishing touch of the unit, the, sum, the summative assessment which in this instance we're going to call it the apprenticeship and this is where students are going to learn how to talk about people that inspire them and they're going to get that information from their classmates as well and they're going to work through that and the final assignment is to do some green screen technology here where they're going to create a collage and that'll be in the background for them to describe the inspirational pers person. Um, one creative twist on this, depending on the ability of the students and the comfortability of the teacher, is that they could, the, the, the partners can assume each other's inspirational person and it can be a live interview by using some green screen technology as well. And if we return to the home page, that is the end of the unit, and the students will now at this point have to show that they can do the can-do statements. Usually there's about 10 to 15 statements of I can do this or I can do that. Then there'll be the unit test to finish up that unit. And that's essentially how the course will be laid out, and that's how the different assessments and different parts of the class are laid out. Thank you for taking a moment to listen about my gamified and flipped learning management system. It's been an interesting process, breaking some old habits of learning management systems that I've had in the past and integrating some new best practices from collaboration and through different studies in this course. I look forward to continuing to grow this and even adapting it with first-person videos uh, to create a virtual kind of component to this class. Uh, once the curriculum is laid down, I'm going to use various resources I have in different countries of friends to create first-person videos to embed into this course to make it feel more organic and more lifelike, as if the student gets a chance to visually transport themselves to that Spanish-speaking environment. Once again, thank you for taking the time to listen to my slideshow. Um, I hope to hear some feedback from you if you have any. Uh, have a great day, and good luck creating your own blended, flipped, gamified learning management system.